Okay. <clears throat> Tip top of the morning. What is it? Is it Wednesday or Thursday today? Oh, man, I don't know. Um, okay, here's today's idea. Um, I got these chords that I, that I really love. That I, Something I heard in a Danny Gatton solo years ago. Um, it might have been from that record, Relentless. Do you guys know that record with uh, Joey D. Francesco? He was a, a B3 player. Um, incredible record. Man, oh man. I got it for Christmas uh, when I was about 12 years old, I think. And um, it was so over my head, I didn't really even like it. There was like I liked the more kind of telly kind of things. It took me a long time to appreciate the more like jazz leanings of that record. It was so deep, so incredible. Um, anyway, I think at one point he plays his chord. I'm going to show you. It's a cool, cool dissonant chord. Um, So the theory behind it, at least the way I think of it, is like um, you got a C sharp, a D, C sharp, D, and F sharp with an E on the bottom. So I think of it over E, you know. way to visually think of it which is a lot of what I do because I just I don't have a very good theory um, uh, understanding at all so a lot of the way I think on the guitar is visually the way I think of this is two frets either side of the the a shape in E right so five one three Five, one, three, and E, right? Two frets either side of that. You can think of this as D, right? And you get the dissonance with this sound. Same shape over A. F sharp minor. F. F sharp minor F. figured out exactly what to do over those yet. That ascending thing could be cool because the riff in B is ascending. So maybe it's cool to go and take those all the way down while the other one's climbing up. Just an idea. It could be that could be a cool tune. If anyone's got a good name for that, drop it in the comments. Um, I'm gonna work on that today. Um, <clears throat> this is a cool guitar that I've bought twice now. It's a '79 Greco. When they really were like, look how good the carve is on the top. 
man, they was they were really getting into the details um, of the. I guess that's a lawsuit year, is what they call it. I love this guitar so much. I've had a bunch of Les Pauls over the years, and I always come back to this one. It's really telly-like. Um, um, maybe that's why I like it so much. I don't know. Um, I've changed all the hardware and everything on this guitar. I took the third middle pickup out because I just wasn't really using it much. So I got to figure out something to do with that. Um, but it's got Faber, a Faber bridge and um, tunematic on it, and I put some nice pots in it. And um, anyway, I spent a bunch of time working on this one winter, about five years ago, and then I sold it to my mate Greg Walton at Exact Tone XTS for a few years, and immediately regretted it. And he was sweet enough to sell it back to me this year. I love this guitar; it's really cool. Um, it's not too heavy either. It's pretty light for a Les Paul, which is nice. Um, someone asked a question about uh, playing with Vince Gill on the last video. Uh, what that's, what's that like? Um, and I've been, Book got me that gig uh, years ago when he got the um, Joe Walsh gig. Um, he recommended me for it, and I'm forever grateful. It was cool because I grew up listening to all those Vince Gill records, trying to learn, you know, all those unbelievable solos and his playing and his sensibilities. And so I already knew pretty much all of the songs. And um, I've been touring with him on and off for about five years now, four or five years maybe. Um, it's, it's a really good gig for me personally because um, you know, I, I get to really concentrate on my rhythm guitar playing because it's very much a supportive role in that band, you know, and Vince is a killer rhythm guitar player. He's showed me so many cool things, really great, simple, inside rhythmic things. You know, it's a big band with Vince. It's like there's eight or nine of us up there. So there's a lot of rhythm going on. So you got to find those simple things that are supportive, don't get in the way of everybody else. Um, it's, a, it's a really good gig and a good study in minimalism. Um, <clears throat> and it's super fun. You know, Vince is such a great guy. Uh, and he throws me a solo every now and then, that's fun too. But what I love about it is, and I'm playing strictly rhythm guitar, uh, I'll do a whole video about that we could maybe dissect a couple songs and i could show you guys some ways i approach playing rhythm behind those kinds of things um you know i'm the first to admit rhythm guitar has always been my weakest um you know weakest part of my playing um but it's actually the part that i'm the most enchanted with in general because you know, rhythm guitar is 95% of guitar playing, right? It really is. All this other stuff is fun, and it's fun to do in a solo setting. But, you know, if you when it comes to playing a gig, you're not playing that many solos. You're playing, you know, trying to find cool, interesting ways to play rhythm behind what's going on. So, you know... Richard Bennett is someone in Nashville that's like I've idolized for a long time. His rhythm guitar playing and his tonal approach to um, to recording and you know Richard's incredible. Um, we should get into that on a video. Strictly rhythm. Um, it's cool because you know it's something I'm digging into trying to learn more about because you know chords are chords are where the magic is right we should know that by now <laughs> took me a long time to understand that everything is it's all about chords anyway i'm rambling sorry uh so think of that riff visually as 
two frets shy, two frets high. Two frets high, two frets shy. This is the middle. Two frets shy, two frets high, two frets shy. I don't know. Okay. See you guys tomorrow.